My name is Sheena Dagnalt. I'm a PhD student with Professor Nicholas Haas at the University of Queensland Diamantina Institute. And I'm here at the ESDR in Bordeaux to talk about my poster, um, Bortezomib Induces Immunogenic Cell Death in Melanoma and Enhances Immune Responses in Vivo. So essentially, um, immunogenic cell death is a relatively new type of apoptosis that's been discovered in the last decade or so, by which if you elicit specific types of drugs, they can promote damage-associated molecular patterns um, from melanoma cells or from cancer cells. And such patterns are ATP secretion, heat shock protein 70 and 90, and calreticulin that come to the surface of um, cancer cells where they normally reside inside the cell. Um, additionally, release of HMGB1. So all of these damage-associated molecular patterns act as markers to um, recruit the immune system by um, recognizing different receptors on immune cells. So as immune cells initially recruit, they uptake the antigen of the dying melanoma cell process, present, and then as it matures, they give the antigen message to the proper T cell machinery required in order to have an immunogenic response. Um, so the first thing that we look at then are in um, human, um, human cells and in murine cells. Um, we use annexin-5, which is a phosphodiglycerin marker, to, uh, and dapistain to look at um, whether or not cells are in apoptosis, um, whether they're in early apoptosis, late apoptosis, uh, are necrotic, or are alive. And in this case, then, what we see is um, DMSO, a negative control, doxorubicin, a positive control, and bortezomib, our, our drug of choice, which is a proteasome inhibitor. Um, there is definitely apopto early apoptotic and late apoptotic cells in all conditions, and that's just also shown in the drug treatments, and, and DMSO shouldn't cause much cell death. So um, using, using early and late apoptotic markers then, uh, that's just further quantification there. We can go ahead and see if calreticulin is indeed on the surface of um, melanoma cells after bortezomib treatment. So if we look at, excuse me, if we look at um, the human cells and the murine cells, we see that um, compared to DMSO, which is the calreticulin here, the surface expression on W164 is higher after bortezomib treatment, also comparative to the positive control. And that goes for um, both cell lines and in the murine model. That's just quantified further below in B. Um, and if we look at spinning disc confocal here, just to zoom in if I can, um, if we have a look at the spinning disc confocal, we can see that, that in permeabilized and non-permeabilized conditions of cells that have been transfected with SEC61, which is an endoplasmic reticular um, marker, and um, looking at co-localization of calreticulin, which in permeabilized form should have um, should be located on the same surface, whereas in non-permeabilized conditions, they should be located on different surfaces, which is the case here. So in control cells and in uh, bortezomib cells, which need to be further quantified, you see that the m cherry sec 61 is located in a similar area in permeabilized cells. However, in non-permeabilized cells, they uh, appear in different planes indicating that indeed calreticulin can be shuttled to the surface. So that's just a nice supplement to the flow data. Um, we can further look for heat shock proteins um, in a similar fashion, again, using the annexin-5 positivity um, DAPI negative to look at early apoptotic cells or um, annexin positive DAPI positive cells to look at late apoptotic cells at the surface of the cells to see that HSP70 is upregulated after bortezomib treatment in human cell lines um, and slightly in B16s. However, the HSP90 or additionally HSP90 is upregulated in W164s um, and significantly upregulated in murine cell lines. So, Finally, um, the last two 
molecular patterns that we would like to look at are um, <clears throat> just here are the release of HMGB1. So essentially HMGB1 is located in the nucleus of cells as a histone marker. However, when it's released from the cells, it acts as a cytokine that messages the um, immune cells to come to the location of the cancer cells. So what we show is that in um, human cell lines, again, and our B16 F10 murine cells, in DMSO treatment, the nuclear, um, there's a nuclear stain of HMGB1. However, after bortezomib, you do have nuclear stain, but you also get these puncti that seem to have shuttled, shuttled out of the nucleus into the cytos um, cytoplasm, indicating that they're probably on their way out or they might be being trafficked out to be secreted into the extracellular environment. And further, this is quantified here. You can see that it's significant in several fields of view, this um, puncti. And additionally, we look at ATP secretion. When ATP is secreted, it again acts as a find me signal to the immune system. And uh, in inhuman and murine cells, we see that there is more ATP secreted, um, except in this 1205, this is a, an outlier in this condition, and we have to still look into it, but it may, may not be biologically relevant as the full change is so small. However, if you look at the B16F10, there is a huge increase of ATP secretion. So this is all good and great. We can show um, in 2D that we indeed have molecular patterns being upregulated, um, but I guess the next thing to do is to prove in a, in a mouse model or in an intact immune system that this is actually happening. So in order to do that, we treat cells in a petri dish um, with the bortezomib, and then when they're dead or dying, we look at the annexin 5 positivity, take those cells, collect it as a vaccination, and then you vaccinate into the right flank of the mouse, uh, wait 10 days, and then in the left flank, you challenge with live tumor cells and um, basically wait for the readout to see if there's going to be tumor progression or initiation. And um, what you'll see here then is, just one moment, I'll get this big. So what you'll see here is in the B16s after two weeks, we have negative control mice that develop tumors, all of them. Um, however, up to two, almost three weeks later, we have, um, 40% of the control mice that still do not have a uh, tumor at all, and then 30% of the bortezomib-treated mice um, it do not have any tumor initiation. And because B16F10s are supposedly a less immunogenic cell line, uh, we wanted to use a, a more immunogenic cell line. So what we have done is irradiated YUM um, UV or YUM 1.7 cell lines, call them YUM UV 1.7s, in order to see if they would become more immunogenic with a, a higher mutational burden. And interestingly, what we see is they don't have a um, better response, but they have a similar response to the B16F10s. As you can see here, the naive and the negative control mice actually um, just get this to work here, yep. So the, the naive and the negative control mice here develop tumors within 10 days, and then you have the um, positive control mice and the treatment mice that um, have a longer response up to 100 days where they don't develop tumors at all. So we believe that immunogenic cell death is a good mode in order to recruit the immune system initially um, do we believe that it is a good treatment to use on its own? No, but it's potentially good, good recruitment in order to use in combination with currently used therapies, such as immune checkpoint inhibitors. And there is a clear rationale for doing this. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening.